In this video, we're testing out the compatibility between the Mill Lab grinder and our April Brewers. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're back in the studio. We haven't been here for a while because we've been busy traveling the world doing homebrewing videos, which we're still doing. But we think that every once in a while, it's really interesting to just look at new products coming out. So not so much reviewing, much more kind of looking at how does it compare with the April Brewer. And one of the things you actually need with the different April Brewers is a grinder. And we're very curious whenever we see a new grinder on the market, we kind of want to take it home, we want to test it, and we want to see just how would we use it together with the April Brewers. If you want to see more in-depth review videos on YouTube, there is a bunch of them out there. So I'm sure you've already found them or seen them. In this specific video, we're going to look at this little thing, which is basically a um, grinder coming out of a company called Mill Lab. And they're connected to Timor, which we're going to come back to a little bit later in this video. Now, one of the things that are interesting with this grinder is that it's actually an electrical grinder. But as you can see, it has a really small footprint. So basically a portable electrical grinder, I would say, which is interesting. One of the things we should talk about before we kind of jump into showing our favorite recipe with it is the fact that the burr set is a conical burr set. And it's actually the same burr set that Timor is using in their very high-end chestnut hand grinders. So I believe the S3 or something similar to that. So it's actually an identical pair of burrs just basically put into an electrical setting. And one of the things that are kind of interesting with the grinder is that you can use it for quite a long time. So you can do, with our kind of doses, we're gonna run a 13 gram dose here. You can easily do up to 30, 40 kind of grind sets on one charge, which is really nice. Um, so if you want to take it out for, let's say, your summer house or vacations or whatever, it kind of works. Now, first of all, why would you have an electrical grinder that is very similar to a hand grinder? I think one of the arguments that are very valid is the fact that RPM matters. So basically, how fast you grind something makes a big difference to the quality of the grinder that you're using or the grinded quality of coffee. So one of the advantages here is that we're actually looking at a grind quality that's going to be a lot more consistent than, let's say, a traditional hand grinder. That's why, for example, when I compete myself, I tend to use electrical grinders over hand grinders because I want to be more consistent. Now, another thing with this grinder is that you have a little dial basically underneath that is showing you where their kind of recommended grind sizes are. Uh, we've been testing it now for a few weeks and we got a pretty good idea of where we want to be when it comes to brewing April coffee. Obviously, the roast degree of your coffee, let's say light, medium, dark to simplify, has a big impact on where you want to be grind size-wise. But it's actually really helpful. Also has a little bit of a dial, kind of come a dentist style. Here it actually shows the numbers, so it's a little bit easier to orient, which I kind of appreciate. But let's put it to use and see what comes out. So we're going to be dosing 13 grams of coffee. Click it on underneath, a little bit of cap here. Then basically just let it sit, turn it on, let it grind. So a few things here. One, it's not the fastest grinders in the world, but if you compare it with, for example, a hand grinder, it's quite efficient. Uh, two, it's actually not that loud. Obviously it's a bit loud. Um, but in comparison to other kind of electrical grinders you can have at home, this is kind of okay. Uh, again, the only difference being maybe the speed of the grinding. So we can hear now that the grinding is actually done and it turns off by itself as well, which is kind of convenient. Uh, you can basically turn it on, go and do something else and come back for it, right? Now back to the actual recipe here. So first of all, we're using the new version of the April Ceramic Brewer. Uh, every year or so, we're looking for new factories to improve quality, both in terms of packaging, but also in terms of design and consistency. Um, and very recently, we launched a new version of the Ceramic Brewer uh, to kind of make sure to just overall improve the product. Now, with that, we're using the original April paper filter. We now have two sizes, a larger one, which is specifically for the plastic brewer, and the smaller original one, which is for the ceramic and the glass brewer. 
Now for this recipe, we're gonna be dosing, again, as I said, 13 grams of coffee. And we ground these on the setting of 16 on this grinder, which is in within the range of their recommended, let's say, filter grind, which is between, I believe, nine and 18. So we're kind of on the higher end. But that makes sense for us because we always appreciate a little bit of a grinder, coarser grind size. So we're getting the coffee grounds in, leveling out the coffee bed. And we're gonna do this in a very simple, classic April two style pour. The water temperature is at 90 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna run this 60 gram circle pour over into a 40 gram center pour. And this pour is all gonna be done within 10 seconds. And then we're gonna let this sit for about 40 seconds, which is a little bit longer than usual. But one of the things I find interesting with brewing these days is that I really like to actually change that in between pour time, because that does quite a big difference depending on the coffee that you're using. In this case, we're using a washed processed geisha from a farm in Guatemala called El Socorro. One of our favorite coffees this season has been absolutely amazing. A lot of jasmine notes, a lot of stone fruits. Overall, just very kind of clean and classic from a geisha perspective. Now, second pour here at 45 seconds, same thing, 60 gram in a circle, 40 gram in a center. We stop at 200. And then it's basically just draw down after this. Now, what we can see on this grinder is that we have a little bit of a challenge with a longer contact time, which is evident that maybe we have a little bit more fines here than what we're actually used to. Uh, I'm personally a big fan of the Timor Sculpture, I believe 078. That's basically our office grinder that we use here almost daily. And I think that is producing slightly better quality. That being said, they also come in two quite different price ranges. So that kind of difference in quality makes a lot of sense. Now, we're just going to wait for this to go down. We're going to do some tasting, do some evaluations, and then we're going to get right back to you guys. So we're back, we tasted the coffee, looked a little bit closer to the grinder and also to the coffee bed. I think, first of all, one of the more interesting observations, and we get this a lot when we use this grinder, is that we always see in the end of the brew when we look at the coffee bed, kind of large particles on the top sitting, and they're like pretty large, even though we're getting slower or more kind of normal flow rates here. So there seems to be a lot of very small particles that are kind of clogging up the brew a little bit and leaving you with also these kind of slightly larger particles. So the question here is what kind of, let's say, flavors or qualities of the coffees are we actually extracting here, right? Sometimes when the difference between the small particles and the large particles gets a little bit too big, we're gonna get a little bit, let's say, under and over extracted notes in coffee at the same time, which to be fair, every single cup of coffee is a combination of the two. Uh, it's just a visual kind of representation here. In the end of the day, the cup of coffee actually tastes really solid. It tastes very similar to how we would like to brew this coffee in usual. It took a little bit of time to dial in that recipe in the first place, but we are quite happy with it. Um, so overall, you can clearly make a solid cup of coffee with it. Obviously, one of the interesting things here, which I mentioned before, is that this is basically a hand grinder with a consistent RPM, right? And that's the advantage with electrical grinders. So basically, if you're going to brew 100 morning coffees with this versus then the chestnut grinder, which has the same RPM, in theory, you're going to be a little bit more consistent using this than the chestnut. Uh, then it's kind of up for you to choose which grinder do you want to use. We think in general, you can get pretty good quality. It's a clean coffee. In their own kind of marketing material, one of the things they're pitching is that they have a very uniform grind quality. Uh, to be fair, in relationship to professional grinders, and no grinder is really uniform, so maybe that's true. They're pitching it should be a sweeter coffee, a cleaner coffee. I don't necessarily think it's much sweeter than any other coffee, but it does produce a really solid cup of coffee, which is important. And I do, I do have to admit that I actually quite enjoy the footprint of this grinder, right? It is a really tiny grinder, really easy to put basically anywhere. And I can see myself maybe take it to the summer house or something similar, right? So the sum here is pretty much, seems to be a solid, simple grinder. Obviously you have to battle test a little bit more to really kind of get to know it, uh, but you can clearly brew a tasty cup of coffee and it seems to be quite compatible with the April Brewer, uh, which we also appreciate. Now that was kind of all for this video as 
per usual. If you have any recommendations, if you use this grinder, have comments on this grinder, you're more than welcome to just comment below here. Again, this, it's been a while since we've been in the studio, did this kind of, let's say, review style video. You are gonna see a few of them moving on in the future whenever we see a product that seems really interesting with our own brewers. We tend to bring it in here and we're gonna use it and share it with you all, right? So with that, as always, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, share, sign up for Patreon. That's where you kind of know where we are gonna go next. And if you haven't seen our homebrewing videos yet, make sure you check them out. Thank you and have a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.